Okay, good day. So let's have another example for the I area moment a method. A 600 pound per foot uniformly distributed load is applied to the left half of the cantilever beam ABC. I determine the magnitude of the force P that must be applied as shown so that the displacement at A is a 0. Okay, so we have this cantilever, a, a cantilever beam ABC. Okay, we are introducing this uh, force P at the free end okay, to make the displacement at point A equal to a 0. Okay, that that Force P will also make this cantilever beam uh, indeterminate. If we say indeterminate beam, uh, the support reactions cannot be computed or cannot be solved uh, using the three equations of equilibrium. Uh, since we have uh, okay, point C is a fixed support, uh, supposedly we have a vertical reaction at C, uh, a horizontal reaction at C, and for a fixed support, uh, we have a moment reaction. Let's say this is the moment at uh, C. Uh, that makes uh, this beam indeterminate. So how do we uh, solve for this uh, force P? Using the area moment uh, method. Uh, first, we are to draw our moment diagram. And I will be choosing uh, point uh, C. So we are to take the moments of the forces about uh, point C just to eliminate this uh, moment at uh, C in our moment diagram. So what will be the magnitude of, that, uh, of the moments? We have this uh, P. Uh, the length of the beam is uh, 8 meters. That is eight, uh, P times 8 okay, for our moment diagram. Okay, basically, so we have uh, P times uh, P times 8. Okay, the magnitude of the moment caused by this uh, force P at point C will be equal to uh, let's say that is uh, 8 times uh, P. So we have one problem that is uh, the 600 pounds uh, per foot is uh, discontinued at point B. So to simplify our moment diagram, we need to extend this 600 pounds per foot up to uh, point C. Uh, just to simplify our uh, moment diagram. So we are uh, extending this load uh, from point B to uh, point C uh, with the same magnitude uh, this is the same as the 600 pounds per uh, foot uh, since I uh, we are we extended that a uh, load up to point C uh, just to analyze or just to cancel its effect we are all to, we are also to uh, present or to introduce I an upward uniformly distributed load from point B to uh, point C. Since I uh, that is I uh, we can say that this load is imaginary. So again, uh, its purpose is just to simplify our moment uh, diagram. So we have an upward uniformly distributed load that is from point B to uh, point C uh, with a magnitude of uh, 600 pounds per uh, foot. Okay. Then uh, we are now to draw our moment diagram because of this uh, 600 pounds per foot uniformly distributed load uh, downward. So its uh, concentration is acting uh, midway. So this we have 600 times 8. What is 600 times 8? Is that 4,800? Uh, we are to check. And uh, that is uh, 600 times the span of the beam is 8. Uh, that is 4,800. Then for the upward, that is the upward 600 pounds per foot. That is 600 times 4. This is, uh, this is equal to uh, 2,400. Uh, let's say acting at a distance of 2 feet from point C. Okay, so take note that these are uniformly distributed load. Okay, the degree of these uh, loads is uh, 0 uh, degree for a uniformly distributed load. Then if we are now to proceed on our moment diagram, uh, this will give a second degree graph. So that is, uh, what is the magnitude of that moment? That is 600. Okay, 600 times a length of 8 acting at a distance of 4, uh, four feet. That's equal to 9,200. That is towards the negative uh, moment diagram. So this is uh, with a magnitude of uh, negative 9,200. Okay, then we are now to consider this upward 
the upward 600 pounds uh, per foot and what is the magnitude of that uh, moment we have uh, the uniformly distributed load is 600 for a span of 4 that is the 2400 uh, its concentration is a uh, mid length of the span 4 feet that is 2 so we have that as uh, 4200 it is upward which means uh, towards the positive area or the positive moment uh, diagram so this is positive 4800 so the degree of this uh, two graphs caused by units uh, by this uh, uniformly distributed load uh, is a second uh, we have second degree graph all right then again uh, if we are to recall how do we compute for the area uh, the area of, of a span drill that is 1 over the degree of the graph and plus 1 uh, the base times height and their uh, centroid is at a distance of 1 over n plus 2 uh, times uh, the base uh, if we are now to, to draw the elastic curve or the imaginary deflected form of the beam uh, so for the elastic curve of the beam so we have since we have a support reaction or that is at the force p at a so let's say this is at a we have this upward force a p uh, that will make the, the the displacement at a equal to zero uh, let's say the, the appearance of the elastic curve will be i uh, like this one so this is uh, the appearance so let's say the appearance of the uh, elastic curve or simply the deflected form an imaginary uh, representation of the uh, deflected form of uh, the beam all right so since we have this upward force p i uh, let's say point a will not uh, move then uh, how do we apply the area moment method we are now to draw tangent lines uh, for this case uh, we are to start uh, we are to draw a tangent line at point C uh, towards uh, point A so let's say this is uh, the tangent line it will intersect uh, point C uh, this is uh, the tangent line let's say uh, this tangent line is the deviation from point C to uh, point A uh, this is uh, a blue pen that is our uh, tangent line I uh, drawn from point C uh, to uh, point A as you can see uh, if a tangent line will uh, intersect uh, the elastic curve the equivalent of this uh, deviation is basic basically equal to uh, zero so the deviation uh, we can have an equation that is the deviation from point C to point A is equal to zero why because this a uh, tangent line drawn from point C to point A will intersect the elastic curve at point a right, how do we compute for the equivalent of the deviation that is a deviation from the deviation from point c uh, to point a is equal to this is equal to the area of uh, the moment diagram that is i from i from point c to uh, point d and we are to multiply the distance of their centroids i uh, towards uh, the second point that is towards uh, point a right, so this is i uh, divided by uh, to be divided by uh, EI okay so we are now to uh, compute for the areas of the moment diagrams and their uh, corresponding uh, distances of their centroids uh, towards uh, point A so this is uh, the centroid of uh, this moment diagram the 8P so this uh, distance is uh, the same as for a triangle that is 2 over 3 up or uh, the length of the beam uh, 8 then for the distance of the centroid of this spandrel by the degree of the spandrel is a uh, two so basically this is a uh, distance is one so n plus two that is the same as one fourth of uh, eight so one fourth of eight is basically equal to this is equal to two so which means this distance is equal to a uh, six all right what about the distance of this spandrel the distance of its uh, centroid 
Uh, this is 4 feet. So 1 over uh, 2 plus 2 of uh, 4 is simply equal to uh, 1. So which means I, this uh, distance is 4 minus 1. This is uh, 3. Uh, that makes the distance of this uh, centroid uh, towards uh, point A. Uh, the total length of the beam is uh, 8. 8 minus 1. This is uh, 7, uh, 7 feet. So we are now able to uh, locate the distances of the centroids of the moment diagrams okay, towards uh, point, uh, point A. So we are now to uh, compute for the deviation. So we have the deviation from A to C, uh, from C to A is equal to 0 since uh, the tangent line will intersect uh, point A, uh, will intersect the elastic curve at uh, point A. So this is now uh, 0. We have for the triangle that is 1 half. Its base is 8. Uh, its height is 8 times uh, P. The distance of its centroid towards point A is uh, 2 thirds of uh, 8 uh, feet. Then plus uh, the spandrel, its area is 1 over 2 plus 1. Uh, then uh, its uh, base is uh, 8 feet. Its height is negative 9,200. The distance of its uh, centroid towards point A is uh, 6 uh, feet. Then plus, uh, we have there is 1 over the area, that is 2 plus 1. Uh, its uh, base is uh, 4 feet. Its height is plus positive 4,800. The distance of its centroid towards point A is uh, 7 uh, feet. So in this equation, as you can see, the only unknown is now uh, the force uh, P. So computing for force P, Okay, so we have that as okay, 1 over uh, 3 of uh, 8. This is multiplied by uh, negative uh, 9,200. Okay, multiplied by uh, 6. Then plus, this is 1 over 3 okay, of 4. Then multiplied by uh, 4,800. This is multiplied by uh, 7. That's negative uh, 262,400. Then to be divided by... Uh, that is, okay, 8 times 8 is 64. Uh, that is uh, 64 over 2. Then multiplied by okay, 2 over 3 up. Okay, 2 over 3 up 8. So we have that as 1,537.5. Then transpose, that will give us a positive value. A positive value of 1,500. Uh, 37 uh, 37.5 pounds we have to check it is 1537.5 pounds so that will be okay, the magnitude of the uh, force P okay, that will give a deflection equal to 0 at uh, point A so this will be our uh, solution